Battle control initialized. Hey, hey, people, Five Aces here. My Cerebral Cortex is still spinning in a Chrono Vortex from last week's Shoutcast, but this time it's the real deal. This is gonna be it, the newcomer versus the, uh, the old school poster child of troll gameplay and uh, cheese rushes. We've got on the top left, spawning as written with the Slick Spectator interface since we're back onto, onto dev test. it is gonna be Spam Hall. Spam Hall, a uh, very prolific member of the community also programmed the chatbot on my channel in case you're wondering and bottom right a an actual legit newcomer this is mr misery who has risen through the ranks and has taken some uh, really big names in the process i think he's in uh, he's been promoted to academy rank 3 now which basically means that he has successfully wielded every single aspect of the of the game what excuse me did amhol just did he just sell a power plant or something? That is a very awkward build. Uh, there is no harvest route, so it's definitely a ref cell. It's also a bit too early for that. So, a power plant into barracks into a super late refinery. I don't know what Amal was on about. That is uh, basically a techies rush. That's not a tech rush, that's more like a techies rush. You get, uh, get to deny yourself a power plant and get like four technicians out early. Not sure if that's worth it. Spoiler alert, it isn't. But uh, this is also, by the way, going to be a best of three or best of five, depending on the, on the circumstances surrounding these series. And it's probably going to split into two because sweet, sweet Google ad revenue. No, it's because all of those games, like from the from the timer, I think they're all 30 minutes long until... Unless they're just chatting it up after a five minute failed rush from Amhol, which might also happen. But hey, uh, let's focus on the game at hands here. We've got Misery spawning as Ukraine for those interested. Take notes, boys and girls. Oh, wow! The engineer likes to live dangerously, but gets away unscathed in the end. And this is gonna be the end of it. This little cul de sac is gonna be proof lethal for Amhol's infantry eventually. Yeah, there we go. And he's trying to go for a snipe. He's trying to go for a counter engine snipe, but I doubt it's gonna happen. This is so close. Ah, flak truck rush. That is a very prudent choice. The map in question, by the way, in, um, is Blitz. And Blitz is an RHL Season 8 map, which coincidentally has started this week. We also, a little self-advertisement, we also uh, did an RHL livestream. And surprisingly, unlike all the other seasons where no players were willing to play on stream, we've had plenty of games on stream. And some really good ones. Buff played, I think, uh, three of his matchups. We've had, yeah, we've had all the big names there, basically. No Masters games, obviously, because why would Masters ever play a game? on stream or ever, uh, unless it's with a like three month delay. But then again, Happy is no longer in Master, so the best we can do, do is delay for like one month. Master was the hap uh, Happy was the master of delaying, obviously, because he was busy smurfing. Smurfing as, what was the name, Archangel. <laughs> well, there goes the tech rush. And super smart play from Misery. He knew he had pushed away, uh, there's a light tank now, he knew it pushed away Amhol's infantry. So that allowed him to safely grab the Wilderick off of Amhol in plain sight. Because he knew that the flag truck could just poke him out and provide too much line of sight. Just posturing with the inf. Also, this is a future balance update in the in the makings. There is probably going to be a light tank speed nerf or a slight flag flax truck speed increase again. Because right now the stats just don't add up. The light tank is after all still a tank. And it shouldn't be faster than a light vehicle, than, uh, than uh, like the flag truck. So right now, if a fl if a light tank, light tanks are actually slightly faster, and if they ever find a flak truck out in the open, they just make minced meat out of them, which makes going for early flaks super risky against allies. Basically only good to ward off a ranger. Yeah. It's still very good in Soviet versus Soviet, obviously. And here comes the counter-engineer. And obviously, Misery doesn't have anything to push this back with. He doesn't have a vehicle right now. That's kind of the psychological mind games. Amhol knows that uh, the that the light scout vehicle for uh, for misery has been lost. Uh, it's been replaced by another flag there. And immediately a rapid response team is being shifted in. There is going to be a light tank on the hunt. I doubt this capture is going to finish. It's a valiant effort anyway, because you're trying to create pressure with the flag truck. Didn't work. Amhol not falling for it. Nope. Also getting pushed away, so the timer resets. But still, some nice scouting denies. It's always super good in the early game. Even taking the hospital away from Misery's ammo, and that means he's just, just gonna have a bit more map control. But at the same rate, Misery has macroed up. 
And let me tell you, I've, I don't think I've played against him, but I've observed some of his games. He has taken games even off of Barfi, if I remember correctly, maybe Bane as well. Anyway, like, he plays a super, super, uh, he just has a really great sense of game awareness. He just plays a very, um, an extremely smart style, where he knows where he's supposed to be, he knows, he knows when he's supposed to retreat, and he's someone who doesn't fall prey to this, uh, to this fallacy, the sunk cost fallacy. I've seen him pull out of engagements even after losing a couple of units, just in time to save, uh, like, most of the infantry corps. And that's what many players tend to neglect. Knowing when to take engagements and knowing when it's a losing engagement. Uh, speaking of losing engagements, this is going to be... The heavy tank hasn't been revealed. That's pretty cool. The hospital has revealed the flak truck, so maybe Amholt thinks this is a perfect timing where the heavy tank hasn't hit the field yet. But surprise, motherfucker! So, snipes the medium for free. That is just a very good timing window. But obviously he knows nothing about this pillbox mill. It's like the infantry chain gun massacre waiting to happen. Uh, still not too many rockets. Ah, and as you can see here, Misery just pulling back, not committing too much into this into this uh, densely fortified position. Just stutter stepping back, taking some bleeding, some attrition damage, but that's fine. He has preserved his tank, he's preserved most of his infantry core, and thus he's fine to hold on to this expansion rather than just committing and losing everything, and then uh, Amhol having an MCV plus pillboxes. Uh, double flame tower, that is a bit of a ballsy, uh, of a ballsy position. Wow! Okay, that's such quick reactions. Misery immediately refocusing the flame towers onto the conyard, onto the base defenses. Yeah, this conyard needs to get the hell out of dodge because, as we've learned previously, flame towers do have ridiculous DPS against just about anything if they manage to hit. That is a big asterisk because they don't always hit in track, obviously. And there's now Tesla Quill. This is just the one-two punch of melee range flame towers plus long range Tesla Quill. There is no way for allies to breach this uh, unless it's critical infantry mass or artillery. But as we as we all know, like in games this aggressive, it's really hard to wait for your for your tier two to kick in. Engineer going down. That is going to be the light tank. Oh, it, it's been preserved. It has been patched up. Pretty nice. Repairs have been scheduled. And immediately, Misery just pulling back all his expensive armored units. Didn't take too many losses. He's gonna be able to chip away at this blob from range. This is just such great game sense. Massive medium tank flank here. By the way, why is this one... Um, this is undamaged. I have set the health bars to show undamaged. So this one tank took a rifle salvo or something. He's trying to go in. This is probably a bad idea. Yeah, Tesla Quill. Max range Tesla. No way to breach this. Rather than that, I would actually have gone for the main base. Amhol didn't need to commit here. He could have just just uh, kept his infantry blob growing here and attacked into the main base. Would have been the most smart move. The more prudent move. Now that's the conyard on the fire and four heavies. That is just nothing to scoff at. Four heavies are gonna burst pretty much any building they get their hands on. Yeah. As you can see, good night. Good night, conyard. It was nice knowing you. Well, that is a bit of a bad engagement because it was uh, the pillbox was tanking rifle fire for so long. But now, ah, Amhol still has up infantry de density. That's all right. He's got, he has managed to preserve his old truck. This is a game of inches. Just barely holding on for the time being. Not for very long though. Ah, and now he's going for the main base. Oh no! But the, the tank pathing—it's either all messed up. What? This must have been misery. Yeah, misery walled off by with wire fence, so not very effective. Still a smart idea. Well, here he can stay and just trade off with harvesters. That's all right. He lost a harvester himself. Topside, this is multi-prong engagements at their finest. And thus far, really well played from Misery because he managed to uh, to avoid the arc, uh, the the firing arc of the enemy base defenses. There are there is a wall of pillboxes, a literal wall of pillboxes, but he's not committing into it. Super smart play. I like that. And this is getting poked away as well. Oh, nice shot on the way out. That's why heavy tanks are so much better. Alpha damage or burst damage is so much stronger than like the continuous stream of DPS from the mediums. And those short burst engagements. Tech rush. Uh, well, not tech rush, but there's a Raider Dome out ram hole. And that's probably the cue for more artillery and Black Hawks. Yeah, I'm intentionally pronouncing them Black Hawks now because... Because of some confusion on livestream, you know. <laughs> Just saying. 
Still a nice line of sight, uh, advanced, nice line of sight uh, provided by the hospital. <coughs> the doctors without borders ratting out the infantry there. Interesting. Another push onto the main base from Amhol. Man, this is so much multitasking going on. Meanwhile, at the bottom left, a storm is brewing. The winter is coming, and Amhol ain't prepared. He ain't. He ain't got his coat. Let's put it that way. Should have brought his Ushanka. I really like what Misery is doing here. Flame towers can stay and trade with pillboxes for days, and they can also just make. They can also just stir fry barracks. That's something they're extremely good at. As you can see here again, this is again another example of where lesser players or players who have less patience would have committed fully. I would have also fallen prey to some cost fallacy, like I've already traded this much infantry, let's go for it, hit the A button. But no! Misery, just pulling back, not taking too many losses, just a bit of attrition damage. More civilians coming out from the cell, good hustle. But at the end of the day he manages to push him back and Amhol is forced to retreat his tanks to the safety of his um, of his service depot. There is a massive flank here, but the first Black Hawk is online. Ooh, some more eco being raided. Man, can he hold with this tech rush? He's got the artilleries, he's got the hind, or the Black Hawk. The thick as fuck hind. But he doesn't have the eco to support it right now. So, let's check our... Yep. Yeah. Broke as fuck. <coughs> He is pulling a Venezuela on us here. It ain't looking too hot for, for Amhol. That's not even Greece levels of economy anymore. That is straight up Venezuela. I'm sorry. Hate to break it to ya. Oh, I thought that was, those were mechanics. Would have been great to recover some husks. Ah, mechanics are coming out now. Good choice from Amhol. Just, if you're this low on cash and resources, just strapped for re- Oh, He denied his husk with the artillery. The force fire actually made it time out early because husks, if you don't know, they take uh, the more damage they take, the faster they time out. And that was just enough to push him over the edge. This is a heavily fortified position, but do the heavy tanks care about that? No, says the heavy tank. This belongs to the people now. And pu yeah, pushing out ammo without even as much as a blink. Man, those heavy tanks just not dying. Force fire from, from Amhol. Oh, he shift queued all of those. He shift queued all those base defenses. Would have been better served just firing in the middle of the infantry blob. Smack dab in the middle. So now Misery would be, yeah, well advised to retreat. Perfect. Look at what he's doing here. He's just retreating out of pillbox range. He knows where the pillbox is. <coughs> and he knows where not to stand. So now this is probably forfeit because pillboxes can wipe you on retreat. But he traded so much better than he should have, considering he just adjusted his positioning a couple tiles. And that's something that players should really get better at, include myself included. This tank leaving on a pixel as well. Ooh, that was the tank from the northern engagement. Jeez. How that survived is beyond me. Because it was going pretty deep. Stop command issued immediately. Well, that Black Hawk is being sent back to base immediately. There is an emergency. Please are uh, scheduled for emergency repairs right now. Still, Amol's got the middle. He's got that one uh, Derek advantage. Not much in the grand scheme of things, but, yeah, you know. Over time, it might add up. Uh, speaking of this Derek, well, that was a very short lived experience. Yeah, misery rerouting to the north, reallocating his forces. And there is still such a, such a big blob in the south. That basically Amal needs to pull all his forces to contest, and if if Misery catches a whiff of this, then he's probably gonna go north. Oh no. Move it! Black Hawk down. This is gonna be an official thing now. The first Black Hawk lost every match is gonna be accompanied by a Black Hawk down sound clip. I'm sorry. Sorry, but I have to do this to you guys and girls. Yeah, that's a bit the infantry density a bit too high, coupled with Base, uh, base defense is popping up. No chance for Misery to break through here. So a nice little cleanup from Amhol. But is that enough to push him back into the game? He's still got two helipads. He's still sitting on a 4k bank. Well, that's two more Black Hawks. And a tank to boot. That's alright. His economical situation is starting to stabilize. With those three harvesters mining out the, uh, the secondary. It's not looking too bad anymore. Oh, except it is. There is a massive push. Three heavy tanks spearheading the assault. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Still haven't replenished my health here, as you can hear. He can block the War Factory. Block it and blow it up. That is straight up what he should go for. Oh! Amol is actually single-handedly targeting out all the infantry. That is pretty cool. Well, he should block the War Factory. He doesn't know that nothing is built there. We can see it. Misery can't. Another detachment being cleaned by the Heinz. Being cleaned up here though. No more rockets. Yeah. That's all the rockets. Sans one down. Nice! Really good call from Amhol. Putting up concrete wall just to prevent the tech snipe and to tangle up the tanks a bit more. Man, the artillery. His artillery has been a bit unlucky this game. Just putting it out there. But that's gonna mean that the war factory is gonna go down. Oh no! Oh, two heavy tanks left. I think he's got enough DPS left in the tank to finish this. Is he though? Is he? No, he isn't! Well, the second heavy tank died way quicker than I expected it to. But yeah, four rockets firing at it. Jeez! War Factory is blocked, but remains stable. And also, he can now reallocate his harvesters. Send him back to work after a, a nice day's strike. Wait, that looked like a longbow. No, it's a Black Hawk. Yeah, one of the points of criticism is still to directed towards the Black Hawk. I like the model, I love it actually, but it's a bit too similar to the longbow. Needs one or two more distinct features, maybe in terms of color palette. But yeah, kudos to the creator of the sprite. Can't credit him, him or her right now because I don't know the name unfortunately, but it is an amazing sprite after all. So bottom line expansion is being camped heavily by a lot of heavies basically swarmed by Stalin's hammer. <coughs> There's gonna be a decently sized Black Hawk force out now. Oh wow! That is a lot of utility and very little DPS. This little blob here costs an MCV's worth, by the way. Jeez. It, it were a shame if a V2 were to land in the middle of this. Right? Okay, finally raid attack is online for, for Misery as well. He had time to catch up in the tech race. And that's so important. In the late game, you can't fight tier 3 with tier 1 unless you've got, like, massively superior economy. I think he doesn't have enough. Wait, he, he force landed one of the hinds, of one of the Blackhawks. He did showcase a feature that hasn't been present in the game before. This is only in the playtest. Helicopters can now force land. And while doing so, they can actually crush infantry. It's one of the most hilarious ways on styling of, on your opponent. Of styling on your opponent, just try it for his. Ooh, <laughs> misery realizing the peril that his raid dome is in. I think he's now out of out of range of dying to the crash, but still, maybe misery is gonna go for an engineer. Well, wow, that was clutch play. Just one more rocket would have killed the raider dome because then uh, the black hawk would have crash landed. There's also a spy here. Hello, Mr. Bond. Where's the spy gonna go? Probably a power infiltration. But, yeah, the ever-seeing eye of the Yak is not gonna allow for this. Definitely no. That's a hard pass. Well, it's still trying. There's a tech center out for Misery here as well. Nice, good call. I would love to send some inf uh, I would love for Amhol to send some infantry up north and just deny the war patch. Then they would be on even footing in terms of econ. Well, not for, not for long anyway, but hey. Now that's the Raider Dome down. There is no denying it. Trades it for a Hind completely fine in my books. And Misery, interestingly, being the first to uh, to go for this ore patch. Amhol, shortly to follow. Ooh! <laughs> Blackhawks didn't have enough ammo left in the tank to finish it off anyway, but it would have been a great deal. Would have been a sweet escape. Oh no! Ooh! Too many zooks on the dance floor. That means all the hinds are down. Until further notice, there are more Blackhawks to replace them. I'm going to use the, the terms Black Hawk and Hind interchangeably. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is, because I'm hardwired. My brain is just hardwired to accept them as Hinds. Yeah, they're Black Hawks. Calls them as I see them. Ooh, losing a lot to the Tesla Quill, but ultimately he's going to be able to push through. And if he gets a good positioning with the Artis, he just needs to bring his Artis to safety. Book it! Run, Artis, run! No! You should have pulled him up north. Oh, yikes. That is a complete collapse on all fronts. This should cue Amhol in to send his forces down south and kill the Conyard. 
The only thing he needs now is to deny this Carnyard. Why is he idling? What is he doing with his forces? That's such a big timing loss. Ooh. Not getting the MCV either. There is another one. Wait, that's skinnier. Yeah, that's a skinny hind. There's the longbow. Gonna finish the job. <laughs> Missile still exploding despite the tracking being messed up. Yeah, if he just had been a bit more decisive, he could have easily wiped this expansion and then it would have been actually a slight um, a slight econ lead for Amhole. But as it stands, he is floating 7k. Are you kidding me? How? Right, let's check the economy tab. 67k with 63k, so he's actually ahead. After all that's said and done. But that's about to change, probably. Because one RT ain't gonna hold the line. Yikes, woefully out of position. And also most of the assets are in Heinz and Longbows. That is gonna be terrible timing. Oh, this MCV! This MCV is gonna make for a glorified meat shield here. He feels the need to go in. <coughs> it's gonna be so hard. It's gonna be super hard. At least he hasn't lost any helicopters. But he's about to lose War Factory, Service Depot, Radar Dome, all the good tech. Oh, tier 3 is online at least. All the Black Hawks going down. And there's a perfectly angled parabombing run. Look at how much slower they fall now. But it doesn't matter because you can control the vector. Uh, one of the currently discussed updates would be to give, him, give the Badgers more speed. But then uh, keep the falling speed very low. That would make it so you would have to really think about it. Wait, oh, there's an eye curtain. Wow. I didn't even notice that. Lots of things to talk about this game. Right, another push onto the southern hemisphere here. Ah, and he's gonna deny the airfield. No more. Nah, there's another one. So, parabombing timer still, still in the makings. Oh no. That, wow. That was an insane crash landing. Even force landed. Like I said, style and air opponent. The new skinny hind, new and improved uh, thick hind. Style on your opponent by crash laying on them. It's a pretty good selling point if you ask me. Yeah, that's all longbows now. All the black hawks have been phased out in favor of some something meat here. And misery, not letting go of the, uh, not letting go here of the accelerator. Oh, ore truck, very bad pathing. I think he was trying to collect those scraps of ore. Which is an unfortunate targeting bug. They actually target ore, just like other units would like, would target uh, enemies. It's a bit of an interesting way how this works. Okay, he's actually managed to route him here. Wow. Some more heavy tank husks being donated over as well, but Amol is too broke. He can't afford anything right now, can't... Tanya, though! Can Tanya save the day? Is she gonna be the MVP? He scouts, scouting the perimeter, sniffing it out. Yeah, let's go. Come at me, bro! Tanya giving it her all. Ah, oh, ultimately, not cutting the mustard. <laughs> the walls were so good previously. Well, tier three. What do you do against tier three Soviet? As allies before GPS is up, you rush a nuke, because why the hell not? Misery now on 10 harvesters, Amhol at 7. Oh, also the radar jammer. That is a very good idea. But how does it stack up against an Iron Curtain? Not all too favorably, I'm afraid. This is probably going to be another war factory down, if I were to guess. No, he's trying to focus down the turret first. Oh, the MRJ is going to be so nasty. Look at it negating all the DPS. Man, Iron Curtain lasts so long, he wasted an another entire salvo here. Oh, is this actually gonna survive? Well... This side, we've seen Tani go down again. Yeah, Tani went down. Unfortunate. Oh no, he built an, a mobile gap generator. Just for style points. This time though, the War Factory is definitely going down. There is no... Oh, there is no saving him this time. Yikes. And Tanya died in the process. Many Tanyas died in the process of making this video. Disclaimer. Not for the uh, for the sensitive. Not for the faint of heart here. Well, Tanya, Mobile Gap Generator, Raider Jammers. That's the ultimate nightmare. What do you want to do against that? What do you want to do against that as Soviets? V2s. V2s fire into the uh, center of mass. Well, mammoths. 
could also do the trick. But Mammoths are actually not that good uh, now that their range has been reduced. And like the way mobile gap generators work is actually quite annoying because they reduce your, your own uh, unit's vision by, I think, two cells flat. So uh, Mammoths don't have crazy vision, I think, like six cells or something. And if you take two away from that, it's next to nothing. Ooh, Sam side being deployed. Lots of scouting technicians. Ooh, that's an entire college fund being drained here just on, on a couple scouts. I don't like what I'm seeing. Well, Amhol is on one base. He's playing the good old one base game. Needs to get an expansion out at some point. He's, yeah, he's building an MCV. It's probably one of his best bets would be to move his original Conyard. As weird as it sounds, he's trying everything to stay in the game here. He's just patching up every single unit. Every single unit counts now. Oh, Tanya is in peril. Mammoth tank is primed and ready. Oh, the good old Swaparoo. I don't think, I don't think Misery saw that. But he's gonna be wondering, huh, why isn't this pillbox firing? So now let's see. This is so annoying fighting without line of sight. Ah, oh, ah, he sees the, he sees the muzzle flash. So he should be aware of what's happening. Nice. The longbow is coming in from behind. In the rear with the gear, swooping in from behind and just taking taking out the mammoth without any chance of retaliation. Oh! That was a longbow dying on the airfield. What are the odds? TIL that um, mobile gap generators leaves hu leave husks. That makes them the only vehicle that the only light vehicle to leave a husk. No wait, MCVs are also light. Light armor. But still interesting. But MCVs can crush, so. Then again, yeah, makes it a bit of an outlier. That is an interesting composition. Now, mass rocket soldiers, mobile radar jammers, is probably there to deal with the mammoths. Another harvester down, yikes. Yeah, ammo is just not catching a break this game. And finally, here's the dreaded flag track transition, and GPS has gone up. Going up. Ooh, perfect timing, denies the conyard with Little to no prejudice. Perfect. Perfect timing. I really like what he's doing there. Big fan. Oh, that's gonna be another uh, another chance at some rear shots into the rear armor of the mammoth tanks. And this is just to showcase how garbage the turret tracking is. But he needs to get rid of the flag truck first. Just wait for it to get out of position. Then make it drop to... Make it drop to longbow ammunition. If I... May rhyme that myself. Ooh, yeah. He also doesn't have enough ammo left in the tanks to finish both the mammoths. That's gonna be so nasty. Ah, he's waiting for the MRJ. This is super smart. I love that. That is such a clever idea. MRJ is gonna deflect all the mammoth tanks, all the mammoth tank tusk missiles. Tanya died again. Oh no, the V2's got her. Damn. What a crazy game, multitasking from start to finish, but ultimately Misery playing it super smart, uh, a super smart positional game, retreating when necessary, you know, employing Sun Tzu's Art of War, strike where your enemy isn't, and yeah, ultimately also just racking up too much value with the Iron Curtain. Even though like the individual Iron Curtain pushes by themselves were not that devastating, but if the, if the numbers culminate, um, it just racks up faster than, than the Chronosphere does, and so Chronosphere would probably not have the, been the best counter from Amhold. Also, he was broke. Yeah, that's it for game one, and that's gonna be a 1-0 up for Misery. I'm awaiting, I'm eagerly awaiting game two. See you in a sec. Battle control, terminated.